Today we're talking value. Today we're talking about some players that I cannot stop drafting at the cost. They are just great values in rookie drafts. So we're going to talk about some of those guys today. But before we get into that, guys, do me a quick favor. Smash that like, smash that subscribe if you're new. But let's get right to it. So the first guy up is going to be the quarterbacks, actually. It's going to be both of them, Bo Nix and Michael Penix. The value that you can draft these guys at in your Superflex drafts has been unbelievable. It's been crazy so far. These guys are falling into the early second, mid-second round of your rookie drafts, and I just don't think that's right. These guys are quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks. Bo Nix is going in as the starter. Michael Penix, a top 10 pick in the NFL draft, and I know he's not going to be playing right away, but guys, we're looking at the value. We're looking at what we can do with this value later on. And when we are playing in these super flex leagues, the quarterback is king. It is much harder to buy a quarterback than it is to buy any other position when you are playing in super flex. There's just less quarterbacks available. There's more of a demand for these quarterbacks, so they cost a lot more. You know, how early can you really take Bo Nix? I'm okay with taking him at like the 1 8, 1 9 after like the top wide receivers and those top other quarterbacks, taking him before maybe even some of the guys like McConkey and Worthy and Brian Thomas Jr., especially if you need a quarterback, don't wait. Okay, you will be burned if you wait. If you have an early second and a late first, take the quarterback in the late first because by the time that early second comes, those quarterbacks might be gone and you might miss out on them. Because just think about it. A Bo Nix has a decent season. And now next season, you're going to be able to trade him for any of those guys that you picked up there. Plus, you can get a worthy plus. You can get a Brian Thomas Jr. plus if everything goes right for Bo Nix and he has a decent first season more and more gms more and more redraft players are playing dynasty now and just not respecting the quarterback position and you will learn in time to respect that quarterback position and right now we have two guys in bonix and michael Penix that are going middle of the second rounds in our rookie drafts and that's just way too late they need to be going earlier i'm not leaving that back into the first round without a bonix or a michael Penix. Right. Whether you believe in those players or not, it doesn't matter. It's just the overall value and what they're going to command in the market. And that's what we're playing for. We are playing the market, right? We're playing the ups and downs of the market. I'm not in love with Bo Nix, but if your quarterback goes down in your super flex league, the first few weeks of the season, somebody's going to be knocking on the door for Bo Nix. And now you're going to be able to tax them. They're going to have to pay. No, no. I want worthy plus. If you want Bo Nix, I'm trying to, you know, you're trying to save your quarterback position here in Superflex, and now I'm going to charge you for it. So I think it's very important that we take these quarterbacks, do not pass up on these quarterbacks in that end of first round, early second round. There's a ton of leagues where I'm seeing Bo Nix going in the early second or mid second. I've seen Michael Penix go in the mid second, late second. That's just way too late because what happens when Michael Penix is a starter? What happens when he finally is a starter, whether Kirk Cousins gets hurt or he just takes over the quarterback position in a year or two? What is going to happen at that point? What is the value going to be for a Michael Penix? Trust me, you're going to be able to get any of those wide receivers or running backs plus more on top of that for you to give up a Michael Penix. Michael Penix is a walking just first round pick in your back pocket. OK, whether it's next year or or the year after, he's going to be worth at least a first round pick. So that's just an extra pick now that you have in your pocket, whether you plan to use him or whether you plan to just trade him when that value skyrockets, right? We are buying on the low. We are selling on the high. So for me, anywhere in that early second round, 201, 202, if these guys are available, I am smashing the draft button. I do not care what I need for my team. I'm taking the value because what we can do is we can turn that value into whatever we want. We can take that value and create the team that we want because we have that value in our pocket. These are starting quarterbacks that got picked in the first round of the NFL draft. They are going to get a chance to play even with a bad first season, we're going to see these guys get another chance because of the draft capital that they have, especially Michael Penix. When that time comes, he's got great weapons around him. A prime Drake London, a prime Kyle Pitts, a prime Bijan Robinson. Like the value is going to be there with Penix when he finally gets the chance to actually start.
And I know a lot of GMs nowadays just don't have the patience to wait for that. Everybody wants the right now, the right now. Everybody's convicted on this rookie or that rookie. Don't be convicted on anybody. Just play the market, play the value, turn it into what you want to turn it into when that time comes. So for me, Bo Nix and Michael Penix, both back end first round picks, I'm not letting them slide farther than that. Because whether it's you or another GM, somebody is going to need a quarterback at some point in time. Next guy up, which is just a great value, and I continuously finding myself smashing the draft button in the mid to late second rounds, is going to be Ricky Pearsall. For some reason, he's just going behind some of these other wide receivers, and he's the first round pick. I know he didn't go to a great spot. He goes to the Niners. They have Debo. They have Ayuk. They have CMC. They still got Jawan Jennings there as well. But Pearsall is a player. This guy is a great route runner, great against man-to-man coverage, which is kind of what the 49ers need. And with Debo and Ayuk, you've got these contract situations. You've got these decisions that the team has to make. And they went out there and drafted a first-round receiver in Ricky Pearsall. Now, you could argue maybe he shouldn't have went in the first round, but that doesn't matter. The fact is that he did. And we know the percentages of the hits on these guys, these wide receivers that get drafted in the first round. And again, now he goes to the Niners. It's a great spot where it's a good team. You have a quarterback. The only problem is there's just a bunch of other guys around him. But we like the talent. We like the profile. And so we're making a bet on that because situations change all the time. Situations change every year. Situations change every couple of weeks sometimes. You never know. But do they get rid of Ayuk? Do they get rid of Debo? At some point in time, they will. Especially when you're drafted a guy in the first round, you're not just going to let him sit behind those guys and be your third wide receiver for years to come. So I think something does happen sooner or later with that. So I'm taking Ricky Pearsall. And on top of that, Debo can't even stay healthy, right? Debo's been injured. So I love taking Pearsall at cost where you can get him in that mid to late second round of your rookie drafts. The next player that I've been drafting a ton of in the third round of my rookie drafts, which is just like an automatic smash draft for me, is Jermaine Burton. He's continuously falling into that mid third round. And I've seen him go as high as the mid second down to the late third. Um, I've taken him in the late second in a couple leagues just because of the players that were there and what I liked. But I am typically getting him in the early to mid third rounds consistently in almost every draft he's falling. There's a lot of wide receivers. There's a lot of running backs that people do like. And it's making Jermaine Burton fall. People are just forgetting about Joe Burrow. People are forgetting about T. Higgins, right? You've got a great quarterback there that can support multiple wide receivers. Right. At worst, you've got Jermaine Burton sliding into the Tyler Boyd role as that third wide receiver. And what's happening with T Higgins, he probably plays out this season, but I don't think he comes back next season. I think the cost is too high. And I think that drafting Burton kind of shows they are preparing for a T Higgins exit at some point in time. Jermaine Burton was a borderline first round NFL draft pick, but because of character concerns and off the field issues, he fell in the draft, but he is a very pro ready wide receiver to come in right away and give some productions. So again, maybe it doesn't happen this year where he has that huge breakout because you do have chase and you have Higgins there, but what happens when Higgins leaves? Does he slide up into that number two role? Burton is a guy that can run a lot of different routes. He's a guy that can play inside. He can play outside. And Joe Burrow was hurt last year. So I know a lot of the attention is not going to the Bengals. A lot of people are off of Joe Burrow. We've seen him actually fall a little bit in dynasty rankings Uh, but we can't just be so in with the now and what just happened like we know what joe burrow can do we know what kind of quarterback he is so i'm betting on joe burrow i'm betting on the situation and i'm betting on burton like especially at a third round price i mean it doesn't get better than that you're not spending a first you're not spending a second but you're getting a guy that can give you some possible wide receiver two wide receiver three production in the third round of rookie drafts Next guy I love at his cost is going to be Javon Baker. Javon Baker, you can get in the mid third round, late third round of your rookie drafts. A lot of people are going after the running backs or some other wide receivers in that area. And it is just leaving Javon Baker to go in that mid third, late third of rookie drafts. And I love the price for that. I mean, I was a Javon Baker fan before the NFL draft. 
kind of fell a little bit, didn't go where we wanted to, didn't get the draft capital that we wanted, but goes to a situation that's pretty decent. I mean, you've got a good rookie quarterback there coming in and Drake May. You don't got a ton of talent really at that wide receiver position. I mean, yes, you do have Kendrick Bourne there. Yes, you got Jalen Polk, who was drafted in the second round. So Javon Baker like has a little bit of work to do as far as working his way up the depth chart. But for a mid third round, late third round pick for a guy that can possibly some be some kind of starter, wide receiver three flex position for us if all goes right i love the price for javon baker i love the talent i'm rooting for him now there's a chance he goes into the season and he's wide receiver four or five on that team right we have to see what happens during training camp mini camp and all that but he is a guy that can work his way up rather easily because of the talent that's there so mid third late third smashing javon baker if he's still there then we get into one of my favorite running backs to draft in our rookie drafts this year is going to be Kamani Vidal. He's a guy that we talked about extensively before the NFL draft. He's also on the video that I posted about some running backs to hold for your taxi squad. So go check out that video if you haven't seen that yet. But Kamani Vidal goes to a great spot. Like he doesn't get the draft capital, but he goes to a Chargers team that likes to run the football a new offense, a new coach. They're going to want to run the football. You've got a Gus Edwards, who's more of like a goal line back, and he's a little bit up there in age. And then you've got J.K. Dobbins, who just hasn't been able to stay healthy at all. And I was a big J.K. Dobbins fan. Love J.K., but can he stay healthy on that squad? I'm just not so sure. What does he look like now coming back from another injury? I don't know. So there's a chance Kamani Vidal gets some playing time and gets an opportunity early on to, you know, have some kind of role on this team. And that's exciting. He's a guy that can run and catch the football. He's a guy that's good in pass protection. So he can find himself on that field in a Chargers offense. So I really do like that. And you're getting Kamani Vidal in pretty much the fourth round of your rookie drafts, right? I've taken him in the third, late third a couple times. Um, but you're getting him consistently in like that late third fourth round of rookie drafts but his ADP is rising people are starting to catch on so he is going a little bit earlier in some leagues I've seen him go as high as the late second which is way too early uh, for me I would say ideal like late third fourth round sometimes even undrafted right it depends on your league like, a lot of our like home leagues you're going to see you're going to be able to just take these guys off of waivers sometimes but really all just depends on your league but late third or fourth round i'm definitely smashing on kamani vidal as much as i can you know he is a guy that you can see a pathway to some playing time and to some opportunity rather quickly and again, we're not projecting out four or five years with any of these running backs like that is very rare to do. You know, we're hoping for a year, maybe two years, even just a couple games where we get these spot starts where we can put them in our lineup or we can trade them for some draft capital or put them in some kind of package, of course, uh, to trade them away once that value goes up. And the last guy is a wide receiver. We're going to be talking about Malik Washington going to the Dolphins, was drafted late in the NFL draft which I think was a steal. That's a crime for him to go that late. Possibly one of the best, or if not the best, slot wide receiver in college football. Malik Washington now goes to a Dolphins team, a high-powered offense. I mean, the quarterback led the league to it last year, led the league in passing yards. You've obviously got the two stud wide receivers, right? You've got Cheetah on one side, you've got Waddle on the other side, but you, now you've got Malik Washington to go in the middle there in that slot which can kind of open things up a little bit right so adding another weapon like washington to that receiving core i really like that for the dolphins i like that for malik washington can he be some kind of wide receiver three flex play maybe or does some of these guys get injured right we've seen waddle be banged up all of last year even cheetah as well we've seen with his hamstring a little bit him having to come off the field for a few plays here and there so of course with injury malik washington will get a bump as well you do have obj that just signed there i'm not too crazy worried about obj um does obj get the work right away does he get some playing time yeah possibly but again we're playing dynasty we're not looking for just one season can malik washington learn behind some of these guys in that year one and then come out in that year two as the starter 
as the slot guy uh, for them. I know they didn't run a lot of like three wide receiver sets last year. They ran a lot of two wide receiver sets. So do they start opening up a little bit more, adding three wide receiver sets, now getting Malik Washington onto the football field? That's a possibility. And now you're getting them in the fourth round of rookie draft. So what do you guys think about some of these players, some of these values that I'm seeing where I'm just automatically smashing, you know, for the value of where they're falling in our rookie drafts? But what do you guys think about some of these guys are there some guys maybe i'm missing that you like that you keep smashing in your rookie drafts let me know it down in the comments i appreciate everybody for watching just do me a quick favor there help out the channel it's a good way to support just smash that like for me smash that subscribe if you're new until next time see y'all in the next one